I want you to stand as we sing together, open up the heavens. God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. On this day, we are remembering with faith what happened at the Jewish Feast of Pentecost in Jerusalem after Jesus had ascended to the Father. Just as he promised, he sent his Holy Spirit upon his followers, filling them with power and with gifts to proclaim this message. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, 
and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. So the promise is for us too. And in that confidence, we sing, open up the heavens, we want to see you. And we say, another lives in me, the creator of the universe. Uh, a teacher who taught me a lot, mostly through her books, but also through a conference I went to. But she said, this would be a good practice for us to do every day, to stand, to put our hand on our heart, so I'm gonna invite you to do that now, and to say, another lives in me, lives in the, creator the, the creator of the universe. What a wonder that is. <laughs> Amen, let's pray. O oh Lord, renew us. Fill us with your spirit again. Grow your fruit of love and joy and peace and all the rest in our hearts. Guide us with your clarity. Show us where we need to take steps of faith. When we think about that first Pentecost and the outpouring of your spirit in these really visible and audible ways, and we think about the reactions of those who saw and heard. It ranged from bewildered perplexity to amazement to sneering skepticism and mockery. Oh, keep us from the latter. Open us to the unexpected, to your inexplicable power and gifts, to fearing you and walking in holiness. May our worship this morning reflect this faith and your filling to the glory of your name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to continue singing with all your people sing.
be seated. Good morning. The Crisis Pregnancy Centre, which was established in 1985, has recently changed their name to Family Support Centre to better reflect the, the many services they provide. There are 31 services they provide, among them being pregnancy tests, education on pregnancy and abortion, adoption counselling, information and referral, mother and baby clothing, relationship counseling, and much more. Babies and children and their care has always been a great interest of mine. I spent many years working with premature infants, and when I think of those situations where all the staff were working so hard to help save the baby's lives and prevent lifelong disabilities, and then realized that at another place, in another situation, these same babies of the same gestation were being destroyed by choice. Manitoba has about 3,000 abortions performed each year. Recently, I read a book called Fierce Mercy by Abby Johnson. She used to work for a huge pro-choice organization in the southern USA, but by God's mercy and grace, realized that, that was not God's will or his work. She has become an outspoken and transformed advocate for vulnerable lives in the lives of millions of clients, individuals, and workers in the abortion industry. So during this time between Mother's Day and Father's Day, um, we as a CCC would invite you to make, help make a positive difference in the lives of women who are facing crisis pregnancies. These baby bottles, and you'll find them over by a table by the desk there, um, are for you to throw your love into, first of all, and loose change into. 
over the next three to four weeks. Now, I know uh, we don't all have loose change available as easily as we used to, uh, but the Family Support Centre is glad to receive checks also. And if you ask, maybe I can put some seed money into a bottle to help it grow. Um, we ask for a return of these bottles by June 18th or 25th. You can pick up a bottle by the office over there, like I said, and so please sign your name. They're labeled with bottle one, two, three, so, and just sign your name and your phone number there if you can, would like to help. Um, thank you very much, and I want to read R Romans 12, verses 6 to 8. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Thanks. Thank you, Shirley, for highlighting that important ministry in our city for us and encouraging us to support it. <clears throat> if you have your prayer pages, I invite you to take those out on the back of your bulletin and have it available there. I want to take us through a little prayer exercise in our prayer this morning. <clears throat> Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord God, king of the universe for you are the creator and giver of life and when your enemy sought to destroy this life you had created you leapt into action putting into motion your great plan of deliverance blessed are you who did not turn up your nose at taking on human flesh the creator joining the created to deliver us from sin and shame restoring us to life and honor. Blessed are you, creator of the universe, who now fills with your Holy Spirit each person who repents and identifies with Jesus Christ. Empowering God, you gave the church the abiding presence of your Holy Spirit. Look upon your church today and hear our petitions. Father, we rejoice with Wes and Jin at the news that he is cancer-free. Praise you for answering these prayers. We know that there are others who are still praying, prayers for healing for their loved ones, and we ask that you would sustain them and hold them up and give them courage to face whatever your answer is. We pray for John Duick in Grace Hospital Thank you for the testimony of a life well lived with you, and we pray for him for strength of faith and courage, and for his wife Linda as well. And for Bruce and Caroline also, as they are dealing with life challenges. Father, we pray for clarity and wisdom in the decisions that are in front of them, and and also for a sense of your presence with them, that they would know that they are not abandoned. Lord, we pray for our church in the transitions that are happening in the next months, that we would be able to see this as an opportunity, a moment to step in and to, to offer our gifts for the sake of your church. Lord, would you renew the sense of mission of the Moral Gospel Church, that we would lean into your guidance rather than shying away from it. And Lord, as we look at some of the names here in our bulletin, I want to invite each of you. I don't want to pray for each one of these names, but I want to invite you to listen to the Holy Spirit who is praying with us and ask him for one of these names, what it is he would like you to pray for. 
We have Abe and Margaret Harder in Bolivia, our church council, and their names are listed, Will and Jerry Keller, and Susan Thiessen. So just choose one of those names and ask, ask God, what would you like me to pray for this person? And whatever comes into your mind, trust that that is the Holy Spirit's prompt and pray as he is prompting you to. Lord, you have directed and you have heard our prayers as we have joined in with your desires and your will for these people. Grant that, gathered and directed by your Spirit, we may confess Christ as Lord and combine our diverse gifts with a singular passion to continue his mission in this world until we join in your eternal praise. Amen. I'll be reading from Acts 2, verses 1 to 21. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven, like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages, as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running, and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be, they exclaimed. These people are from um, Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. Here we are, Parthians, Medes, Lamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, the province of Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and areas of Libya around Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, and all we hear these people speaking in their, our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. And they stood there amazed and perplexed. How can, what can this mean, they asked each other. But the others in the crowd were ridiculed them, saying, they're just drunk, that's all. Then Peter stepped forward with the 11 other apostles and shouted to the crowd, listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem, make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. No, what you are seeing predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit. Even my servants, men and women alike, they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above and signs on earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark, and the moon will become blood red before the great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. I'd like to invite you to stand to continue singing together with Almighty God.
I'll be reading from 1 Corinthians 12, verses 3 to 13. So, I want you to know that no one speaking by the Spirit of God will curse Jesus, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of services, but we, can, we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but is the same God who does the work in all of us. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same Spirit gives the, knowledge, the message of special knowledge. The same Spirit gives great faith to another. And to someone else, the one Spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles and the other the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the Spirit of God or from another spirit. Still, another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages, while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. It is the one and only Spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. The human body is made of many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, and some are free. But we have all been baptized into one body by one spirit, and we all share the same spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Our Father God, we thank you that even now as we look at scripture, as we seek to proclaim your truth, it is the spirit that enables us to proclaim, to understand, and to live out. May your purposes be accomplished. We open our hearts, our minds, and our hands to you. In the name of Christ, amen. Thank you, Annika, for reading these two passages. I noted in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, just before Annika started, those first two verses. Now, dear brothers and sisters, regarding your question about the special abilities that the Spirit gives us, understand that in the Greek, the word would be regarding spiritual things regarding spiritual, spiritual people. Many of the translation have talked about the gifts because that's what he later refers to. But verse 2, he contrasts it. You know that when you were still pagans, you were led astray and swept into worshiping speechless idols. And I hadn't planned on starting a sermon that way, but as I was sitting and praying about the service, I was again reminded of this contrast of their former life, which was worshiping speechless idols, mute, cannot hear, cannot do, are just idols, dead. And he contrasts that to a living relationship, an indwelling by the very presence of God, as Arlene pointed out at the beginning of the service. And so this morning, if we come with kind of a dead faith, where it seems like the spiritual life that we once experienced or that we would like to experience, it just isn't there. I believe we are celebrating today Pentecost, which is about God's life being poured into those that believe. And so there is hope for you, for us, for congregations, for people that are experiencing seasons of drought or emptiness or lifelessness. And so we give ourselves again to this. Now to what I had recorded for our sermon. In Luke chapter 24, and we were there a couple of Sundays ago, verse 49, and now I will send the Holy Spirit just as the Father promised. But stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. And so they waited. And that was at 40-day mark. And so they waited 10 days for 50, penta. 
And in Luke chapter 24, verse 52 to 53, it talks about the disciples going back to Jerusalem filled with joy and every day meeting in the temple and praising God. Until this year, I had never noted that. But Jesus left, taken up into heaven, but they were filled with joy, the scripture says in Luke. And every day they went to the temple and praised God. That was the kind of waiting, the anticipation. It was different than what I had anticipated. In Acts chapter 1, verse 14, it talks about them meeting in the upper room in prayer, 120 of them. But there was this expectancy, a waiting. Now, after what Annika read about in Acts 2, I wonder what a debriefing session with the 11 would have been like. Arlene, on our trip that we took a season ago with the 11 students, often at the end of the day, at the end of the trip, there was a lot of debriefing. What would it have been like to debrief with 11? How would they have answered the question? How was this experience different from what you expected? What were you expecting? What surprised you? And sometimes the way that we tell a story gives account to what we were expecting. And I found it curious, some of the things that were repeated in the retelling of the story in Acts. I noted the words, the inclusive words. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit. Verse 5. At that time there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. And then later on in the prophecy of Joel. I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons, your daughters. Young men will see visions. Old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants. Both men and women. And then verse 21. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That was one of the first things that struck me. And then the sense of all nations. Annika did a great job of reminding us of all the people that were living in Jerusalem at that time, people from so many different nations. And then the part of what happened is that the apostles were able to speak in the mother tongue of all those people. Imagine what that would look like in Winnipeg these days. How many languages would be required to be able to speak in the mother tongue of all the people that have come to our city? That's a little bit what was happening in Jerusalem. And it talks about not just Jewish, but people who had become believers in God and adopted the Jewish faith. But all of them were hearing it in their language, this beautiful good news. And so I wondered about this. Besides the sign that that he had arrived, which was the wind and the fire, the first significant empowerment was the speaking in different languages. This was God's way of underlining that the gospel is for all nations and people groups. In Acts chapter 1, verse 18, verse 8, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere. In Jerusalem, throughout Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Luke 24, verse 47. It was also written that this message will be proclaimed in the authority of of the name of Jesus to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. The Holy Spirit and the empowerment that comes with God's presence is given for the sake of getting the good news to all people on the earth. The Holy Spirit and the empowerment was given 
in order to get the good news of Jesus and the forgiveness of sins to all the people of the world. So do you want to experience more of the Holy Spirit's power? Get involved in spreading the gospel. In the first city that we landed in back in February, in the debriefing sessions, a number of the students talked about very, very poor nights, sleepless nights, and spiritual battles that they were more intense than what they had faced before, especially some of them that were more sensitive. And in the following day, when we mentioned that to one of the workers, the gospel workers there, he said, oh, I forgot to tell you that. And then he noted this. He said that for just tour groups, because he hosts a lot of tours, just secular tours and people that are just coming to see the history, he said they don't speak about that. But people that come to this country very specifically with a spiritual purpose, very often they will experience this kind of spiritual pressure or oppression or difficulties. And then he gave us some tools and reminded us of tools for that spiritual battle. Yesterday I was on a Zoom call with a couple that is over their heads in earthquake relief. They've just set up so many tents and are responding to needs of so many families. One of the hosts asked, the young lady, mother of four, how are you surviving with this kind of intense pressure in ministry? What has prepared you for it? And her answer was very simple. I developed this relationship that I would just talk to Jesus throughout the day about everything that was happening in my life, the daily needs of my children, just in constant communication with Jesus. That is what prepared me, and that's what I do constantly now. And then he asked the next question. What do you observe as you are responding to this great need? And she simply said, the power of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 4, verse 8, we note that the Spirit was there in a special way to proclaim. Chapter 4, verse 8. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of our people. A little bit later on, we note the same thing. Verse 31. After this prayer, the meeting place shook, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. Something about the Holy Spirit and the proclamation and boldness in the proclamation. In chapter 6, verse 9 to 10, it's about Stephen, arrested in front of the council, being challenged. And then verse 10, none of them could stand against the wisdom and the Spirit, and the Spirit is capitalized, with which Stephen spoke. The power was there for contending for the faith. And then chapter 8, verse 29. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, Go and walk alongside beside the carriage, directing him to the person that was now ready to hear. And so we see the Spirit very directly involved and in the empowerment of the news getting to all nations. And I was all fired about this and thought the sermon was finished at that. But then I read the complementary text, which was 1 Corinthians, which is 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And I realized that the story of the Holy Spirit doesn't end in Acts. What we have in Acts is the disciples' first encounter with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. They experienced this, as I've already said, their ability to speak in other languages, giving, being given courage and clarity in preaching the gospel, but their understanding of this gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit, and their experience with this gift kept growing. And so must ours. And as we read the epistles, we see the emphasis 
to rely on the Holy Spirit, not just in the proclamation, but in the transformation of our lives. Romans chapter 8, verse 13 and 14. For if you live by its detects, dedicts, you will die. But if, through the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the sinful nature, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. We put to death the deeds of our previous life, of the sinful nature, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we are led into holiness by the Spirit. And then verse Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. The Holy Spirit produces and ripens this kind of fruit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these kind of things. So today, if there's fruit that is still too green, if the gentleness or the patience still needs to ripen, or if some kindness needs to grow in your life, this is not something that we muster up on our own, but we have one that lives inside of us, that not only aids, but can make all of that germinate to start and then to grow and to ripen. James Dunn in his commentary says, the Spirit is the power of God within creation. Remember the Genesis account? The Spirit hovering over the earth. The Spirit is the power of God within creation and human life. The impact of the Spirit is therefore characteristically one of transformation, of enabling what would be impossible in human strength alone. In this case, it is enabling to live and to speak in such a way that bears witness to the risen Christ. The impact of the Spirit is therefore characteristically one of transformation, of enabling what would otherwise be impossible just in human strength. And so in summary, the Holy Spirit enables the proclamation and the demonstration of the gospel. And then I thought I was finished. And then I read more. And then I realized there's this other aspect. Colossians chapter 1, verse 6. The same good news that came to you is going out all over the world. It is bearing fruit, as I've just talked about, everywhere, by changing lives, just as it changed your lives from the day you first heard it and understood the truth about God's wonderful grace. Now that's a pretty good summary of what I've tried to say so far from Colossians chapter one. But then verse seven, listen to this. You learned about the good news from Epaphras, our beloved coworker. He is Christ's faithful servant and he is helping us on your behalf. And then verse 8, he says this. He has told us about the love for others that the Holy Spirit has given you. He has told us about the love for others that the Holy Spirit has given you. So the Holy Spirit is there in the bold proclamation in the directing of the witness, in transforming our lives. But the Holy Spirit is there also as we gather together, as we live out the gospel in community. And the Holy Spirit enables us, empowers us to love one another. He told us about the love for others that the Holy Spirit has given you. 1 Corinthians was read earlier already. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7. A spiritual gift is given to each of us 
so that we can help each other. And spiritual gift, it's the Greek word charisma, concrete expression of God's grace. To each one of us is given a concrete expression of God's grace. The Holy Spirit is God's empowering presence in our lives, resulting in concrete expressions of his grace. Arden Thiessen, in his book, The Biblical Case for Equality, says this, The Spirit produces within the individual believers the graces and the virtues necessary for a convincing witness. From him come the power, enthusiasm, and joy to be a witness for Jesus in a tough and dangerous, discouraging world. And I would rarely add anything to what my father-in-law says, and I hope he never watches this video, but I might add, I might add the aspect that it's not just within the individual but also within the community of faith, so that our proclamation as individuals, but also collectively as a corporate body of Christ, is convincing and winsome. In Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 47, after this outpouring, and then the empowerment, not just in the proclamation, but in the way that they were learning to love each other, selling so that they could share generously with each other, meeting every day in their homes, breaking bread together. And every day, God added to their number. And it talks about the awe and the wonder about this community of faith. And so, my brothers and sisters, in ourselves, we are scared spitless. We will never speak up for Jesus. In ourselves, we will remain in our sinful nature. We will not be transformed. In ourselves, we will remain isolated, living as individuals. But it is in the power of the Holy Spirit that we celebrate today, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, that we are able to proclaim, that we are able to demonstrate not only to each other, but to the world, the power that is available to us for transformation and for loving the way that Christ loved us. In which of these areas would you long to grow this spring, this summer, this season of your life? I'll close with Ephesians chapter 3. When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resource, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust him and your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love. And may you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great for us to understand fully. And then you will be made complete in the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than what we ask or think or can imagine. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. As you go into this week and you are looking for that power, the Bible says, just ask and the Father will give you what you need. He will give you the Holy Spirit.
I'd like to highlight just one thing in the bulletin, and that is the EMMC gathering, which is coming up in two weeks' time, June 9th to the 11th. So that is the sort of, I was going to say nationwide, but actually our denomination is bigger than one nation. <laughs> so it is the gathering of all the churches that are part of our denomination, the Evangelical Mennonite Mission Conference. And that's happening in Winkler at the Gospel Mission Church. You can see information in the bulletin and also follow the, the web link there to find out more about that. I noticed that it says this workshops and evening sessions, Sunday morning worship is all going to be live streamed as well. So you can probably find that on the website. So if you can't get out, you can still join in and learn and experience who this family of churches is and be encouraged in your faith with the theme of the exchange, the great exchange, the life God offers. And that is good news. It is also the last Sunday that Les and Andrea, Joel and Malia will be with us in church here. And we want to recognize and thank them for their many years of service here in many different ways, in music and worship, the sound, tech stuff as being the, the church council vice chair in the past number of years, um, Joel teaching Sunday school. So you guys have been an integral part of our life here as a church and we're so grateful to God for the years you've been here. And we want to wish you his guidance and blessing as you seek a community of believers in the community where you live. So God go with you, he will go with you. And uh, we send you with our blessing. Oh, it's a hard blessing to give, but we send you with our blessing. <laughs> yes, may the Lord bless you. Um, I think that's all I need to, to mention. So I would like to close with prayer and then a blessing. <clears throat> would you stand together with me? Loving Father, we are so grateful that you have not left us on, your, on our own, but you have sent the Holy Spirit, the indwelling presence of Jesus, here with us now, not limited to one time and place. And so we pray that you would give us courage to walk into whatever you are calling us to this week, inviting us into. As we think even about those prayers we were praying, Perhaps you want us to reach out to that person we prayed for and say, this is how I was praying for you in church on Sunday. Uh, give us courage to do what you are asking us to do. And we thank you that you have promised that you will never leave us or forsake us. We hold on to that promise. We trust that for this church. We trust that for Les and Andrea and their girls as they seek out a church family in their community. We trust that for each person who we have on our hearts this morning, for whom we are concerned, carrying a prayer burden. You will be with us as you have promised. Thank you. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the sharing in the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. <clears throat>